boreal forest is so thick that unless a root wall falls like this, you don't actually get to see the rocks like this, unless you're on logging road or something. So it's usually the same old stuff, like based on the local geology, but every once in a while you find something interesting when you're exposed like this, so you check everyone. We staked some claims, this was one of them, and during our soil sampling, which is part of the exploration that we were doing, um, I was doing an expedition up this way, because the lake is down there, and I came across this trench, which I realized wasn't a natural feature. And so, it wasn't until later that when we were doing uh, comparative analysis with the old maps that I realized that there's a logging road, or not a logging road, a wagon road, but pretty much transecting this thing perfectly. And uh, from the amount of detritus in the bottom of this, it measures up at about a century of accumulation of debris and things. And so we sampled it, and the samples were good, just like the rest of the ones around here. And then, uh, after we were doing research into the Nipissing Diamond, I contacted the Tiffany's archives to inquire about a Montreal Gazette article from 1906 that said that they sent uh, an expedition of diamond specialists and geologists to west of Lake Temiskaming, the Cobalt area, in New Ontario. And so, there's no proof that this is from the Tiffany's expedition. Um, they don't, when, when I contacted the archives, they didn't have any records for that time. So, there's no way to link the two. Um, but the fact this is on the wagon road from Paradis to Cobalt, and the fact that we've got our lake right here, and the fact there's this anomalous trench that's in till, it's in like um, a boulder dump, there's no bedrock uh, nearby here. Um, the samples came back and we don't understand why this trench is here. It's a mystery trench. So, when you get to the stuff you're interested in, because of the way that we sort this stuff, we screen it to a quarter inch mesh before we bring it home to make the sample smaller and also to save the process there. And you always check this stuff just in case. We are soil sampling for um, heavy indicator minerals for diamonds. So there's certain indicator minerals, like chrome diopsides and certain pyrogarnets and certain ilmenites, that geochemically only occur in the same sort of deposit that transports diamonds to surface, these kimberlite pipes. And again, certain of those geochemistries only match pipes that have diamonds, because a lot of these pipes don't have diamonds. So the sample that we're digging right now, what we'll do is we'll process it and then we'll use a microscope to identify visually anything that looks like what we're looking for. And from that visual identification, we send them off to labs for electromicroprobe or certain other tests where they can tell you down the percentages of what um, atomic compositions are for these things. Very small differences make them interesting sometimes. <sighs> We are in a trench that we found on an earlier soil sampling expedition. Just stumbled across it. And it looks like it's about a century old, based on the trees growing in it and all the stuff in the bottom. And it wasn't unusual for people to trench in the cobalt camp because that's one way you expose the bedrock looking for the silver veins. But the anomalous thing about this trench is that there's no real bedrock nearby. So the logic behind making this trench is kind of mysterious. And some trenches have been blasted, so you actually use dynamite which back then was quite expensive. Um, but looking at the way this trench um, exhibits its features, it looks like it was hand dug with picks and shovels. So you gotta consider, that's a lot of labor. You gotta wonder why they did it. So the previous samples we've taken from this trench came back with good results, just like the rest of the program that we have in this area. But what we speculate is that this trench might have been dug, it's just a speculation, by the Tiffany's expedition that was sent up in 1906. Because this is the neighborhood they were exploring. Well, the newspapers at the time said west of Lake Temiskaming, so it's pretty vague. It's possible this trench was made by them, possible. In terms of glaciation, this is what they call down ice. We are down ice from the target. Mm -hmm. So whatever um, got transported from a target, if there was one, um, travels in the direction of glaciation. Um, mechanically transported, and then when the ice melts, it's left where they left it. So there's glacially transported things that have gone hundreds of miles, like Plymouth Rock, 
<laughs> on the East Coast. It came from Labrador, right? Mm -hmm. So um, that American icon is actually a Canadian stone. But based on the mechanics locally and the overburden surveys that the Ontario Geological Survey did, a lot of stuff didn't travel that far at all. So it just depends on what you're looking at. So we're getting a pretty good sample size here. We like to take more smaller samples than big ones so that we can profile the entire local area. So I'm gonna put this in a sample bag. This is what we ended up with out of that hole. So that's what we'll work with at home. Check that out later with the sluice. 